Hello, today we'll be seeing a little bit of a more complex subject and that will be the set of Python. The set of Python is a set of rules or tips that you, you should follow in order to create a program that's easier to read, understand and will probably will run better. So these are just, again, just tips. There are not rules of how to program, there are no definition of functions or rules of how Python works. It's just some standards done by most people that program to be able to read code easier. So I will be explaining some of them and some of them I will be doing some examples when possible if the sample could be done simple enough. So beautiful is better than ugly. Well, that's a simple example. You just want your program to look nicely enough. I mean, yes, you could write, for example, let's say, print. And I go like this. I go like, hello world. And then have something like this and many spaces, maybe go like this like yes this is gonna work but we don't want this in a program this code is gonna be harder to read and understand and just looks really dumb in your code this way you just simply put it all together in one simple line let's print hello world and this is why beautiful is better than ugly explicit is better than implicit just try to leave all your variables explained but, and don't try to make, let's say, to think that because Python does some things automatically, you can't specify how it works because, you know, specifying it helps other people read your code and that helps other programmers to be able to understand your program and see if there could be an improvement or even to understand if there is an error and just does the debugging easier. Simple is better than complex. So it's just a simple rule. Just try to make your code as sure as possible. If there is, for example, a function that will give you the answer of a program of that will actually give that will actually work and do what you want it to do in, for example, two or three code, lines of code, then of course that's gonna be better than some kind of function that maybe will do the same thing, but you will need, for example, seven or even more lines of code. So just try to keep it as simple as possible, but it's complex is better than complicated. So yes, maybe you can do it in two lines of code, but maybe you need to set a lot of variables, or maybe you have to use some really obscure functions, or do something that will really make it hard to understand what you're doing. So in that case, it's better to have a long set of code that is actually easier to understand or easier to read or even easier to work for the machine. Then that, that is better than having like this short program that's actually hard to read, understand and even hard to run. Flat is better than nested. So that is pretty easy to explain in a code. So you have the if, you have else. So what if you want more conditions? So you can nest it, of course. You have, you will have an if and an else inside your first else. But this is actually not recommended as it makes your program more complex and more complex. For example, if we wanted even more conditions, you will go like if, and maybe another else and we don't want this so what you're gonna do is instead have an elif and as simple as that you have already created a more simple to read program and again if you wanted more conditions you simply add more elifs instead of having to nest it and nest it over and over as sparse is better than then, so this means just a special program 
So for example, if you're defining a function, whatever it is, and maybe you are maybe you're defining you are adding values to some variables. So maybe you want to space that and be like x equals to two, y equals three, and maybe z equals five. Sorry. And instead of having it all together, maybe your operations are gonna be somewhere else, like I don't know, mults is gonna be equal to x times z. And then space your print mult. So this is just an easier way to read it. Again, this is a simple program, so maybe the difference is not all that much, but it helps you see where you're defining some variables, where you're doing your your operations and when you're having some output. So divide, dividing your code like this makes it way easier to see what you're doing in each of the parts. And the same goes with readability counts. Again, this goes back to maybe your print. Uh, hello world. And yes, maybe you can go like million spaces over here and be like this and you know what, it's gonna work. But why would you do this? It's hard to read, people, it's it's not just thinking the machine will be able to do it, but also think a human should be able to read it and understand what's going on. Again, this is for debugging purposes and for other programmers to be able to work with your code as much as you work with it. Special cases aren't special enough to break the rules. So, for example, if you're doing a code, maybe a function that will do a specific process with different kind of, maybe an integers, maybe the result will not be the correct one for one of these integers, but it will be the correct one for, each, uh, for every other case. So sometimes it's better to leave just, it is better to leave these special cases alone if you know they are maybe not probable or really not gonna be that much useful. It's better to leave them be rather than destroy your whole program trying to solve why this special case happens. Just don't do it. But there's also practicality if it's purity. So yes, uh, if if your code is not gonna work with a lot of variables, then you should try to destroy your code, try to solve that. Again, uh, it's better to have a program that actually works than having a program that looks pretty or it's simple. So yes, you don't have a pure program, but you will be able to have all the variables work correctly, and that is practicality. Errors should never pass silently. So this is basically, if you know there is a possibility of an error, maybe you're going to ask for an input and you don't know if maybe you're going to convert it to an integer and maybe the person using your program is going to put a string, then your program will have an error. So try to use tries exceptions, etc., etc., to be able to tell the user an error is happening rather than have the program actually crash. And tell the, the user whenever an error happens. But unless ex explicit to silence, this means basically if you are if you do want this error to to not appear to the user, if maybe you have a way to solve this error or to hide this error then you should, ex unless it's explicit to silence, never do this, but you can silence errors if you know what you're doing. In the face of ambiguity, refuse the temptation to guess. If you don't know what kind of values you're gonna get, don't guess them, try to do something about it. So, for example, don't break your code trying to just have an input and then do mathematical operations with that input if you have the ambiguity of not knowing if the user is going to actually use numbers for the input. In the case that he doesn't, it's going to count as a string, so you're going to have problems. 
don't guess try to have your program help you in this uh, in all cases there should be one and preferably only one obvious way to do it so yes there is generally one way to do a pro a program not that there are only one way to there is on there is not only one way to get to the answer but there's generally the most simplest and easiest program to understand there's generally one obvious answer to every single program but the single rule is important although that may not, that way may not be obvious at first on your dutch so again easy to understand uh, don't think that because you have the obvious answer from the beginning that's the best answer remember that you can always maybe shorten your code or make it simpler or less complicated or just follow any of the other rules yes you may be getting the answer but try to make your code as elegant as possible now is better than ever also never is often better than right now this is just meaning that try to do the the, the functions or the processes that you want to do but remember that sometimes you have to do it in a special order so don't try to run to write code immediately in, uh, instead try to write code when it's needed or after it has been a, a variable has been used so don't change don't change immediately the value of a variable if you're still going to use the old value of that variable, etc, etc. If the implementation is hard to explain, it's a bad idea. If the implementation is easy to explain, it may be a good idea. So yeah, sometimes your program, you may think that something is missing or that you can add something and make the program better. But it's always useful to, to think it will, will be easy to explain that program. If it will be easy, then yeah, it generally will be a good idea to implement something extra to your code if this extra doesn't destroy your code. But if you really cannot find the words to explain what you're doing with this implementation and it will be hard to make the user understand what he's doing or maybe even other programmers were reading your code it's generally not a good idea if you're only accomplishing the goals of your program you should not try to do these implementations that are gonna make it harder to understand and namespaces are one hunking great idea let's do more of this uh, namespaces so namespace is kind of a library of names, a space where a lot of names are um, saved and this for example works a lot with importing modules and stuff like that so yeah it's basically that using a lot of these libraries creating modules that have a lot of names in it and then using namespaces for other programs with from those modules it's, uh, something that's really use useful and it's gonna help you especially when you're gonna have to import other programs or import libraries or import whatever other function from another module from another program you have created so yeah try to use names just whenever you you will find you think it, it will be useful and that will be all that's the sin of Python just a set of little rules that you should follow in order to make it easier for every single programmer to understand your code and helping you understand your own code remember what everything does and of course help you debugging in case of any bug appearing in your code <laughs>